Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Wimbledon. If we could get 400 likes on the video, that would be bloody fantastic. I've got some other stuff to talk about in that in a second. But before that, enjoy some highlights of the games we played this month. We're going to be doing the Port Vale game today, just because I had to space things out fairly uh, with the JPT final coming up tomorrow, which is going to be fun. I might even suit up. You just never know if I can actually find it. Anyway, enjoy some highlights, and I will join you guys in a sec for the Port Vale game. Vancelot slips it through, Andrews is in here, and Andrews has scored for Coventry City. We had a good chance at one end, didn't take it, and now Corey Andrews puts Coventry ahead here. Disappointing start, his feet. Slips it out wide for Kinsella, can he find a decent cross? One of his trademark brilliant crosses, Loveridge, can he pull it back for someone? Please tell me he'll pull it back for someone. Please tell me he'll pull it back for someone. Falkingham's in there and it's deflected and in. Wimbledon won, Coventry nil, Josh Falkingham, first goal of the season from the forgotten man. He goes free kick. And, oh my god, we've just conceded a rebound free kick goal. I thought those weren't in this game. Oh well, there you go. Wimbledon 1, Coventry 2. Disappointing. Loveridge with a free kick. Whips it in. Falkingham's in there again. And, oh, don't tell me that's Falkingham again. It is, you know. It's Wimbledon 2, Coventry 2. Josh Falkingham with both goals, incredibly. Kinsella with the cross. Loveridge is up there. Falkingham's in again! Holy shit! Josh Falkingham has scored a hat-trick and Wimbledon lead by three goals to two. What a performance from him. Slips it through, all the way through, and Loveridge is in there to make that four. Wimbledon four, Coventry City two, James Loveridge with the goal. Falkingham might have even got an assist on that, I don't know. There we go, guys. 4-2. What a wonderful turnaround. Josh Falkingham, the man of the match by a mile. Whips it in. Kinsella with the strike. What a lovely goal. Bartram's cross. Kinsella with the goal from a corner and, well... There we go, Bury nil, Wimbledon won. There we go guys, Bury nil, Wimbledon won, an away win for the first time in a while, great result. Bombing forward, they've got a lot of players over on the left and nobody's really tracking them at the moment. Guys, if you could get over that'd be awesome. Logan at the back post now for Rochdale, and he scored. Well, we've just been counter from our own corner there, brilliantly. Wimbledon nil, Rochdale won, Joel Logan with the goal. Harris is in there, back to Bartram and it's 1-1. There we go. We've been really good from corners now that Frank comes back. 1-1. Well, there we go, 1-1. We probably should have won this one, but hey, a point is a point. The ball across. Oh, that's such an easy goal. Bradford City 1, Wimbledon nil, and that's, that's, well, not too unexpected, to be honest. Angelina with the ball across, and it's the same goal twice, basically. Bradford City 2, Wimbledon nil, and... <laughs> Oshilaya has scored both of them. Is it through? Riggs all the way in. Can he turn and shoot? He does. There we go. Sean Rigg gets one back for us there. Good little ball through from Loveridge. Pills through. It'll could possibly score. Oh, it's been slapped across the box there instead. And it's James Hansen on the other end. Bradford City 3, Wimbledon 1. And you have to say they probably deserve it on the night. Kinsella. Rigg is in again and the substitute has grabbed himself a brace. If nothing else, it's been a good day for Sean Rigg. There we go. Bradford 3, Wimbledon 2. We fought hard, but it just wasn't enough. Right guys, we're back. So as you can see, the table is looking like this. We're still in the promotion spots and that's the most important thing. But before that, of course, question of the daytime. So you can have a little look at these stats while I do it. Your favourite regen ever. And for me, it has to be Lord, King, Emperor, Norman Millington. Um, it can, there can be no other. I'm really hoping that this save actually produces someone on that level. Though I have to say, Kieran Griffiths was a fun one too, just because he was so good for a while. But it's all about the King, the Lord, the Emperor. So who's your favourite regen that you've ever had on a save? I know it's difficult to put it into context, but tell me something about them. Put it in the comments. If you do have any ideas for a question today, of course, drop those in the comments too with the hashtag QOTD. Right, as well... Um, I know I didn't do a double upload weekend last week. I had to catch up on a lot of work due to doing it the previous week, but this week I want to do it again. If you want to see a double upload weekend, uh, smash a like on this video I, and just keep supporting the videos, which is fantastic because that's what encourages me to do it, of course. Um, but if we could get, how did, we got a stupid amount of likes on the last time, but I don't want to try and push it too far. If we could get 600 on this video, actually, then double upload weekend, it will be again this weekend. Um, same sort of times as last week. It was really fun last time. It gets more videos out and gets this series progressing. So, yeah, that's the league. We're sitting in third, uh, second rather. Only three points clear of Warsaw now. It was six at one point, but that defeat against Bradford uh, cost us somewhat there. But we're now five points behind Luton, and I think Luton are going to walk away with it. Taylor's been a bit poor this month, and that's kind of been the problem. Um, his, oh, sorry, we had a youth intake. Absolutely nothing came through it, though. L literally nothing. But the problem is our, our facilities are so poor. Um, I am trying to improve them, but of course... We have no money, and the board just won't even come close to letting me do anything like that. But over the last five games, the best player has actually been Andy Barcham. So that's his first Player of the Month award for us, which is awesome. Loveridge with goals, 22 there. Taylor with 17. As you can see, his form over the last five matches has been absolutely shocking. Um, he's missed some real bad ones. I'm going to have to try. In fact, we're going to talk to him now, uh, just so you can actually see me do it. Talk to you. Warn player. Uh, Criticised recent form. Haven't scored money, but I am going to have faith in you. Hopefully that will help. There we go. I never like to just lambast them too much because Lyle Taylor doesn't strike me as the type that needs that kind of thing. He needs a bit of support, basically. Uh, is there anything else I want to quickly talk about? Um, oh, schedule page. I did also add scorers and attendances to the schedule page. Someone did request that. So yeah, that is now done. You can just see it. You can have a little look through uh, now. Obviously, there's a few games with... Uh, what the hell? Um, 
don't know what's going on here. Ah, there we go. <laughs> that was bizarre. I think it must have put it in alphabetical order or something. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was... Oh, yeah, of course. Right. So I've been scouting some players. Now, we don't have... Um, anything specific so far but this is what i've been doing this is like you know i said that i get a, a short list of about 20 uh to go for this is my 20 for now now we've just had a youth intake um for england and most of them basically so i may be able to add a few more to this if my scouts bring me some more now of course not all of these are realistic transfers but that doesn't mean you can't sign them it really really doesn't now obviously people like john kirk bride here Obviously, we don't know everything about him yet, but it stands to reason he's probably out of our price range. But I saw him, and he's at Morecambe, so I thought, well, you know, we'll give him a crack. We'll scout him fully anyway. All of these players I'm going to scout to the full now, so I can then start picking a few off. But there's a few that I was really interested in. One one I really wanted. Where has he gone? Jerry. Jerry, where are you, Jezza? He's at... Jerry McCarthy. Um, he's now at Sheffield Wednesday, which is so annoying, because he was at Dungan and Swifts, I think, before. Um, yeah, or it's just Dungan. I don't know if that's a different team. Apologies if that is wrong. But he looks so good, and I really wanted him, and they've landed him for £8,000, and that's what I mean. Other teams will fight you on these. Um, like, for example, there's one here that's was rated at four stars, but has now dropped down a little bit. This is Louis Hudson. That is a haircut. And when I say that, he looks like a Lego man. There's a bit missing. Jesus. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Look, he's actually... All right for an attacking playmaker, I guess. I mean, let's just take a little gander here. Um, oh, composure, though. Look at that composure. Again, sometimes these players, you know, as you scout them more, they will fall and fall and fall. And I'll remove some of them. But these are the ones I'm sort of looking at, potentially, to maybe bring a couple of these guys in um, for the summer, basically. Since we've got a bit of money, not a huge amount, but... I mean, some of these have got great potential, but they've got no intention of joining us. That's the problem, unfortunately, with a lot of these guys. That is some hair as well. Jamie Graham. Ross County produce a shitload of good players. I don't know if they've got a fantastic youth facilities, but it feels like they do. So that's what I'm looking at at the moment. I just wanted to quickly show you that. Um, I'll add some more to this over the next couple of months because um, we've got England now. There's a new batch of players. We didn't get any, but stands to reason that some of the lower league sides might have got a few that are worth talking about. So let's get into the match preview. Um, they're playing this sort of system against us, and I've had mixed luck against this type of thing in the past so i'm not entirely sure how well it's going to go as for tony harris he's still uh not particularly pleased with me in fact it's gone back down to abysmal again i don't know why it just does like even when i get it up to um fairly poor you, you will, we'll play a game come to the next game and it's back down to abysmal despite no notifications or anything it's, it ain't gonna happen is it i'll put him in anyway for reeves here but he's leaving there's no thing about it thing is right i got into a fight with ibu Torre because um he wasn't getting enough game time, although he is going to start today. So, interesting. But um, the only player in the squad that was pissed off about the behavior, way I treated him by just telling him, you know, get in line, was Tony Harris. He's a troublemaker, and unfortunately, we don't need that at the club. We don't need him upset, upsetting squad morale. For what we actually get from him, which, which at the moment is not a lot, it's not worth having it, unfortunately. So, he will leave. Unless something magical happens, then he'll be done for, basically. He'll be gone. Um, no amount of first-team football. He's played every single game uh, since, like, January now, and he's still wants to leave to get first team football so it just feels like that mechanic's a little bit broken but what can you do you know we just kind of kind of have to move on and accept that perhaps tony harris is not to be a wimbledon player for much longer but it's great to have george franken back um we've been scoring a lot more goals from corners and set pieces since he's returned to the team we're at home today so i would expect to win but i am a little bit worried about this tactic that port vale are playing um because it is important that if we are going to have the season that it looks like we're on that we don't screw it up and end up not getting into the playoffs or something at this stage, I would settle for the playoffs. I know that sounds a bit lame, considering how well we've done this year, but I just feel like, with the way we've been playing lately, uh, we've started to drop off the pace a little bit. Hello, Loveridge is through here. He's done well. Loveridge is in there, and yet again, the goalkeeper, this time for them, didn't bother coming and closing the gap down. There it is. Wimbledon won, Port Vale nil, and that pushes us back towards uh, Luton Town, which is bloody lovely. What we needed, frankly. Um... Because I still think they're going to win this league at a canter because they've won like five, six, maybe even seven in a row. It's been a lot of games in a row. That's what I will say. I'm really looking forward to the next episode as well because we've got ourselves a trophy final. And, you know, regardless of the stature of the competition, we're in a potential chance to win a trophy. Loveridge again there in for number 22 or 23 for the season. He's done well, but a lot of those are coming cups and stuff. So uh, I don't think he's even on the top three uh, top goal scorers in the league anymore. Despite for a while, him and Taylor were the top two. But Taylor has really like fallen off the face of the earth in terms of form um like 6.1s 6.2s in virtually every game unfortunately he just needs a goal to get that confidence back and it just hasn't come terrible touch from tony harris i'm quickly getting to the point where i might as well just stop playing him frankly um i wish i'd sold him in january we could have got like two hundred thousand pounds for him and some extra money um in the future with a a sell-on clause which could have helped us but you know you have to make these decisions and i should have just gone with my gut on that but that's my fault that's that's on me um street but I won't be doing that again. If we've got an unhappy player and they're in the last year of the contract, I'm not going to waste time like that. It's It might work once in one in ten times, but it hasn't worked for... What? 
Okay. We're going to watch this first before I break out the what the fuck with that segment because it looked like that ball just trickled in past the keeper. Why haven't happened there? Mason Bennett runs in. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Goes for a sort of daisy cutter and the... I... What? The... Yeah, no, screw it. Run the segment. What the f*** was that? So, yeah, um... It was not the epitome of what the fuck was that, but it felt like a very weak shot that's just trickled in at the near post. It wasn't particularly powerful, it wasn't particularly good, and the goalkeeper's just sort of going, eh, and not bothered with it. Well, Joe, I've got news for you. Shea is coming back soon, so you're going to be out the team, son. Mason Bennett's done okay to it. We're going to have to take a little look at things at halftime. We've probably been the better side still, but not created as much as I would like. Um, I honestly cannot fathom how he let that in. It just seemed to trickle underneath him. Uh, very, very poor goalkeeping from him. He's not the best goalkeeper, I'll admit, but still, that's like schoolboy stuff. Um, anything really standing out there? No, we're going to take a quick gander at the ProZone stats. I don't want this episode to be too long, of course. Um, let's see. Uh, so, right, let's just see if there's anyone on their team that's... They've had eight key passes. Is anyone really standing out as being a create Number 12. Yeah, number 12. Right, let's find out who number 12 is for them. And it is... Who is number 12? Oh, it's Chowdhury. Okay. Um, we're going to close them down. I don't like Titan marking that guy. We'll just close him down a little bit more and hope that the second half... It's, you know, there are more things I could probably do, but usually if I was off camera, I would do more. Uh, take a little bit closer look. But the problem is, in live comms, I don't like to do too much of that sort of stuff just because it can get a bit dull if you're watching it and you're not really into the pro zone stuff, basically. Um, Lyle Taylor has been woeful again today. He really is in shitty form. Um, might have to drop him. Sean Rigg came in against Bradford and scored two off the bench. So I might actually have to give Sean Rigg a try because Lyle Taylor has been that bad. Which is a shame, because he was in scintillating... Are we seriously going to... I was expecting that to roll underneath him as well. The form we're in lately. Um, thing is, actually, no, we would only be two points above Peterborough United now. And we've still got ten games left, remember, guys. This could all still go terribly wrong for us. We're only... Actually, we're ten points clear of Preston. So, I feel like a playoff spot should be in the bag if we just carry on not being completely woeful. I think as long as our form isn't relegation form for the rest of the season, we should be able to get away with uh, a playoff spot. But I really do want to get that automatic promotion spot. You know, another season in this league, okay, might be better for some of the players' development, but I want this series to progress. And I feel like, you know, that, oh, Loveridge is through. Loveridge does brilliantly and Neil makes the save. He probably could have laid that off to Lyle Taylor with a better angle, but there you go. Um, Loveridge has definitely looked like the shining light for us lately. Frankham's ball in. Cleared away, and that should be won by Torre. And, oh, okay, that's nothing happening there. We need to make a substitution soon, and I have a sneaky feeling it's going to be someone like Lyle Taylor. In fact, screw it. I'm getting him off. He's just did so bad. Um, like, it's only a 6.5. It's not his worst performance, but it's definitely not one of his best either. I'm also going to get Tony Harris off uh, for Jake Reeves because he's a better player. And frankly, Tony can go sit on the naughty step for all I care about, really. He's... The thing is, right, I'm looking at his scout report, and it says that he's a fairly professional player. I don't think he is. He sounds like a spoiled twat, frankly, but there you go. Um... The sooner we get him out of the club, the sooner we can get our morale back up and hopefully the rest of the team will follow suit because it's only him and Ibu Toure that are actually going to be bothered about that. And I think Toure will actually be fine next season because Kinsella probably won't want to come on loan for another year, which means Toure will be getting first team football for us. And some other people that have had Toure have told me that he's... The sort of ceiling of his talent is... Oh, Rig is through and Rig very nearly scores and Loveridge very nearly scores and... Can he pull it back across? No, he can't. We really should be winning this game by now, but... I really hope that we don't draw this game because of that ridiculous goal. There you go, Bartram. Out wide for Torre again. Can he get a ball in? He's got huge space for Oliver Shenton. Shenton goes round. Can he pull it across the box? Nope, he's lost the ball. Not good. And Teixeira wasn't anywhere near close enough to close that down, to be fair to him. Bennett flips it over the top. Teixeira is not quick here. There we go. Just mop that up, McDonald. I think... No, it was actually headed forward, I think. So we're all right. A uh, lot of possession today. 20 minutes to go. I feel like we're playing well enough to get that second goal and sneak a 2-1 win here against Vale. They've been a bit off with us to be fair like we had the three all draw at Vale Park I think it's Vale Park um earlier in the season as well they've been a bit of a bogey team for us Reeves can he slip it through he does Rig is in again Rig this time does score Sean Rig I'll tell you what he is starting our next match I don't care about Lyle Taylor right now because Sean Rig he's got three and two now off the bench so he's in form he's going to be starting our next game the two substitutes combined Jake Reeves slips it through and Sean Rig is in there with the first time finish slipping it through and the goalkeeper probably could have done a bit better there as well but it is 2-1 to Wimbledon and that pushes us back up the league and a win that could start to put the sort of the seal on that um, playoff spot you know 12 points clear with 10 games to go is a decent amount uh, we've got one more substitute haven't we in fact I'm going to get Frank off just to make sure he doesn't get an injury or some shit like that because that's the last thing we need frankly um 
So that actually just reminds me, I drop a lot of obscure references into videos and it always amazes me when some people get the references. Like I dropped a reference a couple of videos ago to an American talk show called Last Week Tonight with John Oliver and about four people commented saying that they got the joke and that's brilliant. There's nothing I love more than things like that. Um, Reeves is cutting inside it. Can you have a shot? Oh, there you go. Both the substitutes have combined brilliantly there. Well, not in this particular case, unless Rig provided in the past. But Reeves has got an assist and a goal off the bench now. And I think that's how we're going to go for the rest of the season. Uh, in fact, we're not even going to see who passed it to him because Vale literally just let him walk all the way in off the touchline and slip that one home for 3-1 to Wimbledon. A good performance again. 67 points on the board is very solid for me. And, oh, hello. There might actually be one more goal in this game. But we've wrapped it up at the end. A 3-1 win is is decent and I think based on the stats for the night it's thoroughly deserved you know we're still looking very very good um, for an automatic promotion spot I think we are and I think we'll get it in the end unless someone like Peterborough or Walsall um, can put together an incredible run the problem with the teams below us is that they've been too inconsistent uh, as have, their form has been similar to ours lately and ours has not been that good Riggs in again here um, I thought we were going to grab ourselves a fourth goal yeah, Sean Rick scores another one there, and he's definitely starting the next game. But the fact is, he'll be starting anyway, because I want to make the most of that good form, and hopefully that will get us a few more goals coming up with some touch fixtures. Heck, he may even start in the final. Uh, look at that. One goal there, and then everything else came off the bench. A, a goal and an assist for Reeves, an assist for Falkingham. Oh, it was Falkingham that passed it to him, and a goal for Rick. Perfect performance from the substitutes there, and we are right back up the league. Peterborough did win, but we now pushed our gap from three points up to four points, and that's always a good thing. So, guys, in the next episode, of course, it is going to be the JPT final. Um, I'm going to try and find a suit to see if um, this actually works. I don't wear suits very often. So, if this fits, then that's fantastic. If it doesn't, then I'm just going to look like a penguin, and that's fine. Um, so, yeah. In the next episode, the Bradford game is here. We've got some other games in between, of course. We've got Scunthorpe, Preston, that's huge. Gillingham and Burton. Um, so Burton aren't a great side at the moment, unfortunately, but these ones could be tough ones. So guys, if you like what you've seen and you want to see a double up over weekend this weekend, then do drop a like on the video. If we get it to 600 uh, by the weekend, then I will, of course, drop two videos uh, a day over Saturday and Sunday. I hope to do that every week in December. That's my plan anyway, uh, if I can get the time to do it. Anyway, um, and if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in your inbox every single day at 7 o'clock. And I will see you guys in the next episode for the biggest game in this save so far, the JPT final against Bradford City. Can we get our first trophy? Let me know in the comments if you think we're going to win. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.